I mean, I think that one of the things that happened for me, you know, people will say, you know, how can we get more, more girls into computer science? And I think it's, it, that's a hard question because just asking the question, I worry sometimes can handicap progress. Um, you know, the interesting thing for me was that I got to live in a bubble. Like, I was really good at chemistry, biology, physics, calculus in high school. And, you know, my teachers were genuinely supportive of that, and they never said anything like, you know, wow, you're really good at this. And that's unusual for a girl, <laughs> right? Like, like they, never, they never really brought up the gender issue. They just told me that I was really good at it. And I think I've always just been very gender unaware. Like, I remember, you know, like, hanging out with my best friend at the mall, and she'd be like, that boy over there was really cute. And I'd be like, there was a boy? <laughs> like, um, I just was always very gender blind. And I made it to my senior year, I think, or maybe it was my junior year of, it must have been my senior year of college. And it was funny because there was this columnist that I really loved at the Stanford Daily. And it was sort of this, sometimes it was relationship advice, sometimes it was course advice, you know, which is the sort of, um, almost this Carrie Bradshaw for like the, the college age. And, uh, and I lo always looked forward to her columns. And one Wednesday, she wrote an article on campus icons. And she defined icons as people who everyone knows by description, even if you don't know their name, right? Like the angry man in White Plaza with the sandwich boards who yells at everyone when you bicycle past him. <laughs> or like the guy at the corner pocket cafe that always gets your sandwich order wrong. <laughs> and, you know, like, and so I was sort of reading through this, this article, kind of chuckling to myself, and then all of a sudden there was one of the lines said, the blonde woman in the upper division computer science courses. And I was like, oh, I should know. <laughs> like, and I was like, oh, like, I was like, is that alone descriptive enough to just mean me? Um, and I really, until that moment, had been very blind as to was I the only woman, was the, I the only blonde woman, right? And, um, but I think that that was actually healthy throughout. I think if I had felt more self-conscious about being the only woman uh, along the way, I think it would have actually stifled me a lot more. You know, a lot of times in technology, when you're scared of that new technology, you start to realize, like, well, wait, like, you know, am I really going to be sitting here, you know, you started projecting out 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and you know, are you really not gonna have control over your medical records? Are you really not gonna be banking online? Are you really not gonna be booking your flights online? Like, you know, really? Like, and so, so I mean, I think that that does kind of push you to keep thinking about this. I also think that now, because there's such great discovery mechanisms and such great search mechanisms, there, I, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard it hypothesized one of the interesting outcomes of iTunes and hopefully now of Google Play is apparently it used to be really the case that your music taste got very frozen at age 30. Right? This is why like, you know, your parents like music from the 50s and 60s and like, you like music from the 80s. Or, right? like, and, you know, and so and they think that what's happening now is because of this. I mean, part of it was just that like, there's so much new music, it's exhausting. Like Figuring out what the new hot songs are that you'll like, that you should be listening to, it's just too hard. But now, with the iTunes store, with sort of smart, you know, like, you know, sort of the genius recommendations, you know, it actually brings you new music. And there's some theory that people's music tastes are now staying more up to date. They're staying flexible beyond age 30, 35, right, in terms of how they think about music and how, and how they evolve. And I think that that, you know, hopefully technology brings us into that, where if you can be exposed to new ideas, exposed to new ways of organizing things, doing things, thinking about things, that, that helps people continue to evolve.